Hello, Discovery, and Merry Christmas. It is good to see you. We're delighted to get to host you tonight. I'm going to invite you to stand. We're going to start this party tonight the same way heaven started it 2,000 years ago. We're going to start with singing. There's a hope that's dawn on the horizon. Joy has come to the world. Let's sing.
Hey, before you take a seat, turn to the folks around you, wish them a Merry Christmas and say hello. There's just something good about singing this time of year. It just feels right. I, I think if you're like me, part of that just comes from the fact that I grew up singing these songs, or, or at least culturally, these are songs that we hear this time of year. And, and especially this year, our family got to really have some fun with Christmas carols. Our youngest, Oaks, had a Christmas pageant that they put on at his preschool, and y'all, it was it was awesome. Uh, the, at one point, my son Deacon is sitting next to me, and he's cracking up, and we're talking back and forth about who's your favorite kid on stage right now, because they were, there's just so many characters. My favorite was this little girl. She had on this white dress with roses all over it, like curly Q hair, and just like, she's just a, she's awesome. Like, she's just, just loving that she's singing, but they all have to wear masks. And so these kids are trying to sing through these masks, but you can tell that she's one that she's like, I will not be hindered by said mask. And she is screaming through her mask. And this whole time, I'm just fixated on her because she's just, she is so entertaining. At one point, the song reaches this crescendo and she just can't take it anymore. She literally rips off her mask and goes, glory to God in the highest. And I was like, it's the Hulk, it's amazing. It was so much fun. My son Deacon, his favorite, he goes, that kid in the front, that dude in the front, he's my favorite. They, they were singing, we wish you a Merry Christmas. And they're preschoolers, so there's, there's hand motions to everything. So we wish you a Merry Christmas, but this little guy, he's into it. He has no idea what the chaos he's causing around him. But on the upswing, he's right hooking the person, the dude that's sending on his, and he comes back and he's elbowing the other girl in the chin, and he's just mayhem, like Chris Farley, just going crazy. It was amazing. He's dying laughing. But we sing these songs, and there's something that it does in us this time of year that's just joyful. And some of that is because this is what we've been doing as followers of Jesus for 2,000 years. There are songs recorded, especially in the book of Luke, that we, we continue to sing. Every song that we've sung so far tonight and the ones that we will continue to sing all come from these songs that are recorded in the text, and we, we've had a word that we've developed over church history. We call them canticles, which kind of sounds like a, a cousin to calamari or something like that. These canticles that we sing this time of year, they, they draw us to our roots. They draw us into the presence of that night and what was going on there, and, and they're amazing. And we're going to be looking at one of those canticles tonight. It's the canticle that the angels sung over the shepherds. And it's amazing, but if we're really going to pick up on what's going on there, there's two huge pieces of context that we need to know. And the first is this. This song is being sung to these shepherds in the era of the Roman Empire. And um, if you remember any of your world geography, the Roman Empire was just expanding and exploding all the time. And when they would win a war, they would send messengers in two directions. The first messenger and some of the army would cruise back to Rome, and in a parade, the messenger would come to Caesar, the king, and they would say, Yuan Galizo. That was the Greek word that meant we have good news. Yuan Galizo, the battle has been won. That's what that word would mean in that context. And the army would march through. It was a parade. It was a parade saying the victory has been won. It, it was amazing. But then they would send another messenger in the other direction. And, and if you remember the idea of Pax Romana, the peace of Rome, Rome was really full of themselves. And so they would literally send another messenger around to all the villages around the village they just took over to say, hey, Yuan Galizo, good news. We just beat up your neighbors and you're next. Isn't that great? You know, Rome, they're mean. But... That idea, this, this Yuan Galizo, at, at its guts, what it meant was a, a king has won a victory, a battle's been won, and a new kingdom now has authority in this place. Well, it was amazing what that word means. The other thing that we need to know is that for these shepherds, we're going to be hearing about a king in just a minute, and these shepherds likely had two very personal experiences with kings in their own lifetime. The first was a king by the name of Antigonus. And Antigonus would be to these guys as George Washington is to us as Americans. Antigonus was the one when Rome had invaded, uh, Antigonus was the one that they said, you, well, you're going to lead the armies, we're going to kick these guys out, and we're going to take back our country. And Antigonus did that. 
he was hailed. He tried to restore Israel and the Jewish nation to what everybody thought it was supposed to be. And it was awesome for three years. And then the Roman Empire came back in and they massacred him. And they massacred everybody that was with him and they massacred everything that he had accomplished. To these shepherds who are sitting and about to hear this song from these angels, when they hear the word king, one of the things that conjures up in their mind is, well, yeah, we've had good kings before, but can good kings stand in a world that is so dark and evil? Because we had one once, and he didn't make it. The other king, uh, the king who's ruling at the time when all this ha is happening is a guy named Herod, and Herod is well documented in world history. Herod was awful. He was terrible. Herod was the one, he actually worked with the Roman Empire to be the one that got to come, out, come in and take out Antigonus. He was a puppet king, but he was also incredibly wealthy. I if history has even a fraction of his world set right, he was so wealthy. It, like, picture Bill Gates would mow his front yard type wealth. Like, this type of wealth no one has ever matched in world history. But he wasn't just rich, and he wasn't just a king. He was also a paranoid tyrant. It, it wouldn't be a shocking piece of news to find out that, oh, Herod killed one of his best friends again. Herod, Herod killed one of his generals again. Herod killed one of his wives again. Herod killed one of his kids again. Herod is a bad dude. And the type of king that he is, he rules in such a way, it was not uncommon for people to get drug out of their homes, for awful things to be happening. He ruled with an iron fist with terror and control. So as these shepherds hear that there's this going to be this king, they have these two ideas that come into mind. Was well, he going to be like Antigonus or is he going to be like Herod? Either one, it's a little bit dicey. Now we can head into the text. This is out of Luke chapter 2, and it says this. There were shepherds camping in the neighborhood. They had set night watches over their sheep when suddenly God's angel stood among them, a messenger. And God's glory blazed around them. They were terrified, but the angel said, don't be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event. The literal word in the text, don't be afraid, Yuan Galizo. A battle has been won. It's finished. I'm just here to let you know a new kingdom reigns. And they continue. A great and joyful event has happened that is meant for everybody worldwide. A savior has been born in David's town, a savior who is master and the Messiah. This is what you're to look for, a baby wrapped in a blanket, lying in a manger. At once the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises. Glory to God in the heavenly heights. Peace on earth to men and women on who his favor rests. This messenger shows up. I have news of a new kingdom and a battle won. And here comes the parade of the army that has been fighting this battle, coming back from war. This is not just a song. This is a war song that these angels sing. They're on their way back home to tell their king the good news, and they're stopping along the way at these other outposts to say, hey, we're, we're here, we've taken over. Our king rules in this place now. To these shepherds, this is some troubling news because, again, if they've got Antigonus and Herod in the back of their head, they're going, what can you tell us about this king? Because kings for us don't always mean good news. And we get three titles that belong to this new king. The first title, he's the savior. That might hit our ears as like, oh, that's, that's great. But to these guys, savior was a term that was used for Caesar all the time. To them, that's a tick in the wrong direction. That we have a new king, a battle's been won. Okay, great, who is it? It sounds an awful lot like the old guy. The second term that's given is master or lord, depending on your translation, which again was another title given to Caesar or to people who were ruling at the time. It's just more of the same. We've, we've seen this before. But then, there's a title that's given to this baby that's been born that completely changes the scene. A savior has been born in David's town. A savior who is master and Messiah. 
to these Jewish guys who are, who are sitting on this hillside, they're hearing this news, and they likely grew up memorizing huge chunks of the Old Testament. They knew exactly what Messiah meant, but it must have fallen on their ears like cognitive dissonance. This is, this is something that they had been waiting for their entire lives. They'd heard from their grandparents, from their parents. They'd heard legends about this Messiah, and there was one particular word that was associated with the Messiah no matter what, and it was a Hebrew word, shalom. You might have heard that before. Shalom is a word that generally refers to peace, but it can also refer to harmony or wholeness, completeness, prosperity, welfare, tranquility. The Messiah was going to bring the world right. He was going to set things back to the way that they were supposed to be. I'm going to welcome out um, Alex and Emily and Rich and Jimmy one more time. But this is incredible, just setting the scene, getting in the heads of these shepherds as they're finding out a battle's been won, a new king is here, and he's not quite like the old guys. Do we dare to hope that he's not even like Antigonus, the one good guy that we've seen? He's on a whole other level. Do we dare to believe that maybe the king has finally come who can take everything that's broken and dark and shadowy in the world and he can fix it? He can bring shalom? Can we believe this? In this story, as it continues, they turn to each other and they go, what should we do? And in an instant, it's like they don't even need a discussion. They take off at a dead sprint towards David's town, Bethlehem, and they're looking for a baby wrapped in clothes, lying in a manger. I think if you have this picture in your head, if you've been looking at some of this artwork, maybe you can begin to piece together. Heaven has just finished a battle. The army is trooping back off to heaven. And what's been left at the scene of the war? The weapon of heaven is there. But where Antigonus would rule with rebellion, where Herod would rule with control and tyranny, this new kingdom, the weapon that's been laid down is something they've never seen anything like before. What was laid down was love from heaven. His name is Jesus. Go ahead and give this song a listen. sky of holy light can you see it gentle the cry that's in the night can you hear it hell on earth come meet your king and God revealed Go and tell Child below is God above Here is love Off with the sighs of lonely cries with the chains within his reign for he will free you hell no earth come meet your king Emmanuel God with us 
innocent God revealed No intent The child below is God above Here is love It's the dawn of death's demise Tonight Sin defeated when he'll rise In time Hear the hope we take hold of Here is Kings still vie for our worship today. They still want us to be a part of their kingdom. Busyness is a king. Comfort is king. Anger, money, our need to be right, our need to be loved. Sexual addiction, substance addiction, scar tissue we carry from a strange family or enemies from old, or maybe just the pressure of being a king of your own kingdom. This song is awesome because there's a declaration of war on us. Or maybe better, a declaration of war for us. And the battle's won. A new king has come. And he's not like Antigonus where he's good but he can't, he can't hang. And he's not like Herod where he's evil and oppressive. This is a king that's unlike anything we've ever seen before, and we celebrate it with a song. He loves you. He came down to fight for you. He stayed for you. The invitation of Luke to you is the same as it is to these shepherds. Come and see him. This was chapter 2. The story continues. Come meet this king. Come meet his kingdom, learn what it's like, participate in it, become an agent of it. And like these shepherds, leave the scene and explode as you tell other people, this is too good. The best news in it all is that death isn't the end anymore. That's the victory won. Yes, it's amazing. I'm going to welcome the rest of the band back out. And with a couple, a couple closing thoughts from me, if you're new to Discovery, know that what we do here on Sundays is we just, we talk about the text. We learn together. What's this actually about? Because if you're like me, a lot of the times, even still, I read the Bible and it takes some work to figure out what the heck is going on. I hope tonight, as you've heard this, there's pieces of this, at least you go, I didn't know that. The, the Bible is a treasure chest that is life-changing. Every Sunday we come and talk about it, and every Sunday we leave and we share about it. You're welcome to keep coming and join us. Our next Sunday service will be on January 9th. We're going to be diving into a whole new sermon series on the book of Genesis, uh, just the first three chapters, just looking at who is God, who are we designed to be, what does rest look like, what does party look like, what is this idea of shalom. It will be fantastic. Also, we're we're a church that believes that generosity is one of the gifts that God gives us to participate with him in setting the world right again. It's part of what his kingdom looks like. So as you um, leave tonight, if you want to be a part of giving through discovery to the local community, uh, you can give on that link above or there's some black boxes on the doors as you leave. But know this, as we leave from this place to go home, as we wake up tomorrow after Santa has come, as we open presents and spend time with family and with friends, whatever your day looks like tomorrow, I hope that you hang on to this fact. You won, Galizo. The battle has been fought and won, and what's left standing in the end is a God who loves us. Let's stand and sing because this is good news. Let's sing. Oh, come, oh, ye faithful, 
joyful and triumphant. Come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of ages. Oh, come, let us This is the last song of our Christmas Eve services, minus Midnight Mass, which you can still come to because it's different, but here's the deal. This is your last chance. If you came here to party because Jesus is born, now's the time. Um, you can clap, you can dance, you can raise your hands, you can really do what you want, um, but this is your chance, and I believe that this is worth celebrating. So here we go. Let's sing. The so the angels did say was to certain for shepherds in fields as they lay in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on this cold winter's night that was so deep. 
can stay on your feet. Um, Yuan Galizo, battles won. The king's here, his kingdom's come. And what's the theme of this whole thing? He loves you. We're fond of this church of saying, no matter what you've done, no matter what has been done to you, this news is for you. Merry Christmas. I hope as you go home, as you celebrate, you keep in mind that this was the first time that he came, but he was pretty keen on letting people know this wouldn't be the last time. I hope that that motivates you and excites you. I hope that it thrills you to know him, to know what his kingdom is like, to not just leave his story buried in Luke 2, but like these shepherds to go running to him and learn from him and become like him. What a good story. I wanted to end with a benediction for us before we left tonight. Let me speak these words over us. Come to us, Lord Jesus. Be born in us this night, in our hearts, in our minds, in our lives. May the light of your life be kindled in us and lead us to the shining truth of God with us, God for us, and God in us. Amen. Merry Christmas, Discovery Church. We'll see you back on January 9th.